Amiibos are one of the most popular Nintendo collectibles today, both for their attractive looks and capability to interact with your games. What an awesome and unique idea, right? No, it's been done before. Actually, it's been done a lot before Amiibos, but we aren't planning to talk about anything today other than Nintendo's other collectible encouraging peripheral, the e-reader. Most of you already know about it, but for those who don't, the e-reader was a Game Boy Advance cartridge that had the ability to read special codes through swiping cards. Pokemon cards printed in this era were given codes for their Pokedex entries. Some were even given codes for applications, such as games and animations. Some of these applications required multiple cards, which encouraged players to truly catch them all. Those applications, and the ratings I plan to give them, are the point of today's video. Today, we are going to rank every Pokemon e-reader application from Expedition to Skyridge, including promotional cards. Applications are limited to games and animations ran on the e-reader itself without the need of another game. This means no Eon ticket, no battle cards, and no Pokemon Channel minigames. The rating system has taken a lot of thought, and I have landed on judging based on three categories. Audio visuals, gameplay story, and value. Audio visuals are pretty self-explanatory, both how the app looks and sounds will be assessed. Gameplay is going to be limited to games and their enjoyability, while story will be exclusive to the animations and will depend on the emotions that they make me feel. Finally is value, which is the most complex. I will base value on the longevity you get from the application in comparison to how many cards it takes to use it. All of these will be measured on a scale of 5, meaning there is a total of 15 possible points. At the end, I will place every one of these applications on a tier list. I can't do that, however, until they are rated, so let's get on with it. Diving Corsola Game Diving Corsola is the first game on our list, and will set the precedent for every game that follows it. And it was okay. Visuals left something to be desired, the background was fairly bland, but all the Pokemon looked good. The music was fine, and sound effects were not the worst thing in the world, I will give it a 3 out of 5. Where the game leaves something to be desired is its gameplay. It plays as if it were a vertical water level in Mario, and if you ask anyone, they wouldn't want to play that. 2 out of 5. That being said, using only 2 cards and taking a long time to complete, for difficulty or for padding, you do get a bang for your buck, so I will give it a 4 out of 5 for value. This gives the game a total 9 out of 15. Moving on. Flower Power. Game. Flower Power is almost what Diving Corsola wishes it was. This means it's better, but still not all the way there. Being basically the same game, moving in one direction, dodging obstacles, I didn't expect much. The scenery, however, is leaps and bounds beyond that of Diving Corsola, with much more to look at and an awesome color scheme, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. Gameplay, as stated, is similar to Diving Corsola, but better, so it will get a 3 out of 5. The game is score-based, meaning it can go on forever, and at a cost of only 3 cards, this will balance out at another 3 out of 5. Altogether, I will give this game an 11 out of 15. Flying Journey Animation Flying Journey, our first animation, depicts Dragonite on a flying journey. Visually, the setting is wonderful, showing famous landmarks and some Pokemon along the way, but it moved a little too fast, and after a few goes, my eyes started to feel funny. Musically though, it's got a banger that sounds like it could be right out of Sonic, 3 out of 5. The story the movie tells is really zero to none. Not much really happens other than learning that a Dragonite can move pretty fast. 2 out of 5. And finally is value, which despite only using one card, can't be all that high considering the bulk of the content can be seen in less than 2 seconds. 2 out of 5. This leaves this animation with a total 7 out of 15. Go Polyrath Game Go Polyrath involves a swimming race between Polyrath, Golduck, and Marill. Visuals are not too much to write home about, and I fear I'm going to feel that way for most water-based games. Music, however, is pretty invigorating, so I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Too much water. Gameplay is simply mashing A and B, which is not too fun in its own right, 
but the fact it took me three playthroughs to even figure that out is even worse. 2 out of 5. Lastly is value, which I hate to say, not even being a high score based game will save it from having a 6 card cost. 2 out of 5. That makes for another total 7 out of 15. Gotcha. Animation. I know that we're pretty early into this, but Gotcha might be the most to ever come out of the Nintendo e-reader, and that's including the Eon ticket. Visually, it's wonderful, boasting a lot of fun colors, from the flowers to Jinx and all the other Pokemon she interacts with. Musically, it also pulls its weight, having both a happy sound for pre-Jinx attacks and music to fill the viewer with fear as they know their favorite Pokemon can't escape Jinx's onslaught. 5 out of 5. This animation tells two stories, one of a Pikachu whose daily stroll is interrupted by a failure to escape Jinx and a sweet kiss to end it off. Similarly, Elekid suffers the same fate in his story, but it's more of karma because he's initially bullying a Smoochum. Instead of falling over, Elekid is hit with mean look and then kissed. 5 out of 5. Finally is value which for an animation that only costs one card and gives two awesome scenarios, might also have to be 5 out of 5, giving Gotcha our first 15 out of 15. Here Comes Gloom Animation Here Comes Gloom visually isn't stunning, but isn't bad by any means, and with music I could give or take, it'll get a 3 out of 5. The story is a tragic one, having Gloom enter the forest and take the lives of innocent Pokemon before falling to his hubris and perishing himself. If you haven't seen Citizen Kane, this is basically it, 5 out of 5. Considering its 2 card cost and the joy it brought me, I'll give it a 3 out of 5 for value. This leaves us with an 11 out of 15. Hold Down Hop Hip Hold Down Hop Hip has some nice colors. I love the way that Pichu and Hop Hip look together. The music is cool, and if I could give a 6 for the sound that Pichu makes when he hops, I would. But I can't, so 4 out of 5. Gameplay wise, this has been the most fun so far, involving investing and borderline stressful gameplay that I thoroughly enjoyed, 4 out of 5. It has a high score system allowing for a reason to keep playing, and so at a cost of 2 cards it gets a 4 out of 5 for value too. This means 12 out of 15. Kingler's Day game. I like Kingler's Day. While the scenery lacks, the animation of Kingler flinging Pokemon into the infinite abyss does grant some points. Along with music that gets faster as the game goes on, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. The gameplay consists of scooping out Magikarp and Goldeen while trying to avoid Cloyster, who all appear at different levels of depth. This was involved enough to be fun, but I could see it getting old pretty fast. 3 out of 5. Lastly, the game takes 4 cards to play, which is a lot, but the system of scoring does grant some replayability, also 3 out of 5. Total of 10 out of 15. Lifesaver Animation Lifesaver is on the list of sequels that improve on the first, right next to Toy Story and, I don't know, Shrek? The visuals are the same, except now with added animations and scenery, along with additional music, scoring it a 5 out of 5. Story is also significantly more interesting, having Dragonite save Pikachu from a watery death, 4 out of 5. This animation does lack replayability, as it is the same every time, and with a cost of 2 cards, I'll give it a 3 out of 5. This lands on a total of 12 out of 15. Machop at Work Game Machop at Work's scenery and music is not the best I've ever seen or heard, but it is some of the most unique for these games, so I'll still give it a 3 out of 5. Gameplay-wise, I found it to be fairly boring, only having you punch rocks that come from the sides of the screen. Maybe if it started off faster or made the hitboxes bigger, I'd say different, but for now, 3 out of 5. Lastly is value which unfortunately can't be too hot considering the game does have a definite end at 100 rocks and costs 3 cards, so I will only be giving it a 2 out of 5, making for a total 8 out of 15. Magby and Magmar Animation Magby and Magmar have some music that we've heard before, but some unique sceneries, including this frozen over landscape, 3 out of 5. Bulbapedia describes the story as a Magbar and Magmi who don't learn their lesson and continue to fight, 
but I perceived that it was a father and son who after reaching the brink of death learned to use their fire to keep each other away from the looming threat of hypothermia. Using my interpretation, I'll give it a 5 out of 5 for story. As for value, there's little to no replayability and a cost of 2 cards, leaving it at a solid 3 out of 5. Total is 11 out of 15. Keep it up. Make a Dash Animation Make a Dash is one of the more atmospheric animations, having no music for the majority, only the sound of Rapidash running. This in conjunction with some decent scenery and camera action will score it a 4 out of 5. Story, however, is just a Rapidash running through the finish line. Sad, 1 out of 5. Value is okay though, because for one card, you get an animation that should lend a different final time depending on when the card is scanned. Technically, that is reusability, 3 out of 5. This is a total 8 out of 15. Metronome Animation Metronome looks pretty nice. It has a nice establishing shot that involves a Charizard, and has both a day and night version of the field that Clefairy resides, 4 out of 5. There are three endings to Clefairy's metronome, one involving a nighttime chase with Haunter, one involving an accidental explosion, and one involving sweet evolution. I couldn't get the evolution one to happen, but I have no reason to believe that it wouldn't, 4 out of 5. As for value, getting three endings with only two cards is pretty good, so I will say 4 out of 5 again. This is another total 12 out of 15. Sweet Scent Animation In Sweet Scent, Vileplume goes to the forest previously visited by the Gloom from an earlier animation. This means the scenery is about exactly the same, 3 out of 5. The story, however, has both a good ending and a bad ending. Vileplume may be met with only a swarm of Beedrills who leave them lonely, or their scent may attract a family of Diglets and a Doug Trio who will provide them the companionship it needs, 4 out of 5. As for value, two endings with only one card is pretty nice, 4 out of 5. This leaves the animation with a total 11 out of 15. Dream Eater Game Dream Eater's most redeeming quality is its animations. Both things like Angry Primeape and Drowsy's weird grin score it a 3 out of 5. Gameplay-wise, it's no more than one of those kiss when someone isn't looking flash games from the 2000s. The only difference here is it's actually more stilted, 2 out of 5. Finally is value, which shocking is probably its worst quality. Costing a whopping 7 cards for one of the less fun games and only having one of the cards you actually swipe appear in the game. 1 out of 5. This leads to a grand total 6 out of 15. Harvest Time Game The scenery of Harvest Time isn't astonishing, but the idle dancing animation from Apom is, so 4 out of 5. Gameplay-wise, I assumed I was not going to enjoy it all too much. It's pretty simple. All you do is catch falling fruit. Then, I played it until my score was like 120, so obviously I had a good time. 5 out of 5. The only downside is the 5 card cost, but with how fun the game is, I'd still give it a 3 out of 5. This means a total 12 out of 15. Jumping Doduo Game If you have played the Google Dinosaur game, you have played Jumping Doduo. The difference is the wonderful colors and dynamic music in our e-reader game, 5 out of 5. Gameplay-wise, it's a classic style. This is what someone wants from an auto-runner, 5 out of 5. There are two cards needed to play this game, but the replayability of this game still possibly brings it up to a 4 out of 5. Our first, 14 out of 15. Mighty Tyranitar Game with its goofy looking Tyranitar and absolute banger of a song, I think the audio visuals of Mighty Tyranitar are some of the best we've seen, 5 out of 5. Gameplay wise, the game is simple, just having Tyranitar run back and forth shooting lasers at falling volcanic rocks. It's not the worst, but not the best either, 3 out of 5. This game does take 5 cards to use, one of which nowadays is 100 plus dollars, so I would only give value a 2 out of 5 for a total 10 out of 15. Punching Bags Game Punching Bags is simply the better version of Machop at work. While its visuals are less unique, I think they're more attractive, so I'll still give it a 3 out of 5. The gameplay is a lot more fun. 
considering more variety and more movement options, so I'm going to bump that up to a 4 out of 5. This game gets about the same value though, as even though the game goes on infinitely, it also takes 2 more cards, so 2 out of 5. This is a total 9 out of 15. Rolling Voltorb Game A vertical speedrun that Diving Corsola wishes it could be. Visually, it's a lot more interesting, but the sound effects are not so hot, being way too loud and abrasive for my taste. 3 out of 5. The movement is satisfying, which once again is leaps and bounds beyond Corsola. 4 out of 5. The value is decent considering the replay value even with its 4 card cost. 3 out of 5. This makes for a total 10 out of 15. Sneak and Snatch Game Sneak and Snatch has a cool camera angle, and I really like the sound that Totodile makes when he catches you. So, I will give it a 4 out of 5. The fun ends there though. This is another mashing game, which by default means I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. Lack of compelling gameplay and a 5 card cost mean it'll also score a 2 out of 5 for value. This gives us an 8 out of 15. Subscribe, please. Did you know that 99.3% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed? That's a 0 out of 5 from me. Be sure to look and make sure that isn't you, and if it is, help us get to a 100% subscriber rate. We're also known as a perfect 15 out of 15. Berry Tree Game Visually, I don't know what else to ask for. Berry Tree is one of the best looking games on here, with its splendid framing and walking Teddy Ursas. Also, it makes this noise when counting your points. 5 out of 5 Gameplay wise, it's like mashing, but you actually need to think. It gives you the order of the buttons, and you have to press them as fast as possible over and over. This earns a 4 out of 5. As for value, there are a lot of cards that go into it, but along with the longevity of it, I'll still give it a 3 out of 5, leading to a total 12 out of 15. Ditto Leapfrog Game Ditto Leapfrog is not the most graphically insane, though I want to give it points for being related to another game. In the background, the events of Kingler's Day are playing out, which that fun connection alone nets a 5 out of 5. Gameplay-wise, the goal is just to move back and forth and keep the fish from landing on the ground. Simple, yet fairly fun. 3 out of 5. Last is value, which for 3 cards, the gameplay isn't too much, but the heroism of saving those Pokémon is a lot. 5 out of 5. This makes for a total 13 out of 15. Follow Hoot Hoot Game Follow Hoot Hoot has one of the least exciting backgrounds in this whole video, but it does have this dapper Hoot Hoot in a bow tie. For this, I will say 2 out of 5. Gameplay is just Simon Says, which was a lot of people's favorite minigame in Pokemon Stadium. I will say 3 out of 5. Finally is Value, which I hate to say that 4 cards is a lot for this kind of game, but 3 out of 5. This means a total 8 out of 15. Leak Game Game In Leak Game, you defend your leaks, and these leaks serve as lives. As you run out of leaks, you get closer to game over. This is one of the more interesting visual gameplay elements in one of these games, and it, in conjunction with how fun Farfetch looks in this style, will earn a 4 out of 5. As I said, gameplay is all about defending your leaks, even if it means swatting at other Pokemon, which is a lot of fun. 4 out of 5. Lastly is value, and considering the game is fun and didn't have an ending I could see, I would say it's worth the 4 card cost. 4 out of 5. This makes for a solid 12 out of 15. Night Flight Game Say what you want about this game's background being all black, but it is still unique and makes sense in-universe. Also, the song that plays is really good. All this brought down though by the annoying high-pitched screech that Zubat emits. Four out of five. Gameplay-wise, this is actually super interesting. Having a projectile that doesn't do damage, but just reveals obstacles in your path is a really cool idea. Five out of five. Lastly is value which to have such a cool game for only two cards, when most recent ones have cost so much, I'm gonna say 5 out of 5. This makes for a solid 14 out of 15. Pika Pop Game 
Pika Pop reuses the grass background seen in Follow Hoot Hoot, but adds a lot more visual elements to the empty space, including a lot of cute dancing Pokemon. 4 out of 5. The game falls into the stress object management category, along with some of my other favorite games. Running back and forth to keep the party going is pretty fun, 5 out of 5. Lastly is value, which with a 4 card cost, you can say this game earns it, but doesn't go insanely above and beyond, 4 out of 5. This lands on a total 13 out of 15. Ride the Tuft game. Ride the Tuft is fun and pretty, but I don't have all too much to say about it. If you game over, you get chased by an Ekans, and that's kinda cute, so 5 out of 5. Gameplay is unique, but gets old relatively fast, so 4 out of 5. That lack of longevity and 4 card cost lands us at a nice 3 out of 5 for value. This means 12 out of 15, not bad. Watch Out Game Watch Out takes place in the prettiest location, has a Wobbuffet who does a cute dance, and also has one of my favorite Pokemon, Electabuzz. Altogether, 5 out of 5. Gameplay is fun. It only involves pressing two different buttons when needed, but the situation gets just tense enough to be not too easy and not too hard. 4 out of 5. For the four cards you put in, I can't say it's a bad deal at all. 4 out of 5. This is a total 13 out of 15. Big Fruit Strategy game. The overhead view of the water in Big Fruit Strategy is a nice change of pace from other water-based games, but still leaves something to be desired. 3 out of 5. Gameplay-wise, while the concept is simple, there is something about the controls that leaves me uncomfortable. 2 out of 5. Finally is value, which for 3 cards, the game is elaborate, even if none of the Pokemon on those cards are actually in the game. 3 out of 5. This is a final score of 8 out of 15. Exciting Hide and Seek Animation Finally back to some animation, and I love it. Set either outside a beachside mansion or in a forest, this game of hide and seek is full of cute interactions and wonderful colors. 5 out of 5. The story is cute, and more than likely based on the Pikachu's Peekaboo short from the Celebi movie. No wonder both endings are so fun. In one, Larvitar beats Pikachu in hide and seek and gets to gloat, while in the other, Pikachu wins and tells the audience to hush while he makes his great escape. 5 out of 5. Finally is value, and two endings with two cards is pretty good. For how fun the video is, I will say 4 out of 5. All in all, this is a 14 out of 15. Fire Hoops Game Fire Hoops is the perfect game for you if you saw Make a Dash and said, God, I wish that were me. The scenery is exactly the same except without the atmospheric noise, which I actually think takes away from it. 3 out of 5. Gameplay is nothing too exciting, but I thought actually pretty challenging. Being the gamer I am though, I'm gonna blame it on the hitboxes and the hoops you have to jump through for a totally not salty 3 out of 5. Lastly is value, which for only 2 cards is not too bad, so I will give another salty 3 out of 5. This makes for a total 9 out of 15. Imakuni Ball Game Imakuni Ball is one of the most interesting additions to this list. Based on the Game & Watch game Ball, this game is stylized after and sounds just like it's being played on the Game & Watch, 5 out of 5. As for gameplay, it's also just like the Game & Watch classic, which, if it wasn't good, we still wouldn't be seeing it today. 5 out of 5. Lastly is Value, which is also a 5 out of 5. You only need one card to play this, and you should own that card anyway. It being of the man-myth legend Imakuni, who, if you don't know who that is, I'll link one of my other videos in the top right corner. 15 out of 15 for this one. Time Travel Animation Time Travel follows the adorable Selby, on a passage through time to quench its infinite hunger. The look of the Celebi and the very pretty music that plays is enough for a 4 out of 5. This passage through time can go one of two ways. In the first ending, Celebi gets the berries and lies happily ever after, while in the second, Pikachu and Pichu scare Celebi, leaving it in a state of shock, while Pikachu and Pichu laugh about what they've done. 4 out of 5. When it comes to value, this animation is for sure worth one card, 
especially one that most kids probably already had considering its ties to the movie released around the time. 5 out of 5. This gives us a total 13 out of 15. Toko Toko Truck Game Toko Toko Truck is a lot like jumping Dodoo in the sense that all you do is go forward and jump. However, the scenery in this game has that one beat. The two Pichus ride through a couple different environments, including my favorite one, all the while passing trains and train stations. Their end goal being the Tokyo Pokemon Center. 5 out of 5. The gameplay is a little more lenient than the Dodoo one, making it a slightly easier play. 5 out of 5. The only downside is that for how many cards it takes, there is an ending in this one, unlike Jumping Dodoo, bringing it down to a 3 out of 5 in value, a solid 13 out of 15. Wooper Juggling Game Game Just look at Wooper, 5 out of 5. Gameplay-wise, just look at Wooper, 5 out of 5. Value, it actually costs quite a bit of cards for what you get, 4, so as much as I love the bit, I'm gonna have to give it a 4 out of 5. This is still an awesome 14 out of 15. Lastly, we come to the final two entries, which are part of the construction series of games. These do not work in the same way as most e-reader games, as they are not just small games, but more builders, both a game builder and a music maker. These won't be judged on the same scale considering their magnitude, but I still wanted to show them off because they're super cool. Let's start with the Game Builder, Construction Action. Construction Action allows you to scan in trainer cards and then play as those characters in dungeons that you build yourself by scanning Pokemon cards. Once you pick your trainer, you can make up to 6 rooms to go in, catch the Pokemon, and make it to the end. This game was compatible with a ton of cards, meaning there was an insane amount of possibilities while playing, and while it doesn't always control the best, the novelty of it never really wore off, no matter how mad I got at stupid bad jumps. Let's cool down and make some music. Construction Melody is probably the less fun of the two, but still very cool in its own right. Scanning certain Pokemon cards would give you instruments to use, while other cards gave you the songs they would play and patterns. Then you would be able to listen to the song while watching Clefairy dance. Moving Clefairy would speed up or slow down the song depending on where you put it. And that's it. Not all much to do, but fun to do once or twice nonetheless. And finally, that is all of them. All e-reader Pokemon minigames have officially been rated by yours truly. Next, I will take it upon myself to put them into a tier list for easier viewing for you, the viewer. This was a fun project to do as someone who's too young to really appreciate or own the e-reader in its heyday, and I hope that y'all had fun hearing me ramble about it as someone who is now probably too old to appreciate or own the e-reader. Hopefully, one day my thumb will recover from all those mashing minigames. Until that day comes though, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It is free so you will always get your money's worth.